unassisted. I remain blacklisted. Scam. Sometimes you want to bring it back like karma. Dudes nowadays missing out on the trauma. Hands never get dirty, dirty like a farmer. You know, my state of mind with, with recording this album, first of all, I'm very clear-minded. That's why I like coming to Paris. People think that when, when you come to Paris, you're gonna come with, and see a glass of wine and a white tablecloth or, or the Eiffel Tower. At least that's how Paris is sold to, to us in America. But when you come to Paris for real, Paris for real, this is the ghetto. This is the straight up street life. They living it hard here in Paris, and uh, and I appreciate it. I love the beats. I like the graph scene out here, the graffiti scene, the break, the b-boy breaking scene is is incredible. The producers are hot. The MCs are say doing their thing. France is one of the few places where MCs actually rhyme in their native language. You could hear French MCs everywhere, not really trying to sound American, but really trying to sound French. This is one of my mind states to be in a, a sort of a, a, an American in a city situation, in a global situation. So it's like, it's very comfortable to be here. So my state of mind with doing this album is, I want something for inner city street. I know everybody say, oh, we want street, street music. No, but that's not easy to do, especially with the radio uh, these days, with video these days. Everybody's really going for a pop sound because they want, I guess, the biggest success that they can get. But with me, it's not really about that. I have to meet people in the street. I have to be at the clubs where I can shake hands with people off the edge of the stage. I do the festival dates, I do the club dates, I do theater dates, and everywhere I go, people want boom bap. They want hard beats and hard rhymes. They're not really interested in, in, in more of the pop stuff. You want that when you're in your car looking here or there, or sometimes I, I, I like to record in New York. New York has a nice sound. Chicago has a nice sound. Of course, LA is incredible. You lay LA down. Right now, I'm looking for a global urban sound. It's the streets all over the world. Everywhere there is an urban environment in the world, in Africa, part of the countries in Africa, the cities in China, in Japan, in Thailand, uh, South America, Australia, all over Europe, hard urban street life. And that's what this album is speaking to. Yeah, so the album is called Now Hear This. And that's how you gotta say it. Now hear this. The album is called Now Hear This because my wife, Simone, we were talking one day, Simone and I, we were just talking about what the album should sound like. Do we wanna go straight freestyle with it, just MC to MC? Do we wanna talk about issues on, on, on the album? You know, so we settled on talking about really both. Uh, hitting the inner cities with something that's raw for them, social issues, uh, real issues for the street. Should I drop out of school? Should I stay in school? Should I become an entrepreneur? Should I go get that J-O-B? Should I do that job? Talking about other issues like the American flag versus the Confederate flag. I'm glad that Confederate flag is down, but we should talk about the American flag as well, still flying and still flying for injustice. How we came up with the title for the album is KRS and I were just chilling one day, reading some articles, uh, going through the internet, and we talked about it being boom bap, return it to boom bip. Uh, we talked about uh, parking lot cipher, which is something that we also are going to be doing once we get back to America, because right now we're in France finishing up the recording of Now Hear This. But the reason why we named it Now Hear This is because that is just what it is. It need, people need to hear something new. They need to hear something that's going to enlighten and inspire them and move them forward in their lives, in their real lives, not you know, a video life or internet life or a YouTube life, but your real life when you go out your house and walk outside. You have to get to a point where you hear something that is gonna enlighten and inspire you and motivate your life to a higher level. So it's so important that you pick up, now hear this, because this is something you must hear. 
It's speaking to people who, who don't like injustice. It's speaking to people who's wondering what's going on with the economy, what's going on with political leadership, what's going on with real hip hop, hard beats, hard rhymes. That's what this is. And of course, I'm working with DJ Predator Prime. You know, me and Prime been getting together doing beats. I'm glad. I'm really proud how he's grown up uh, in beats and in rhymes. I produced about 20 tracks and we are condensing it to 10. For this album, it was, it was not difficult, but a challenge. The new school sound has more kick and bassy type of subs more than snares hi-hats and samples but the old school is snares hi-hats and samples so i tried to combine the two so you get a mix of the new school bounce that that type of kind of west coast east coast mix of a bounce vibe but then the greediness of the old school boom bap vibe from like the early 80s late 90s and so on so my main production style is really simple one computer for mixing, um, mixing and editing if I need to digitize any vinyl or if I have um, listened to a CD I like, just pop it in, sample it from there, or if I want to get really deep into it, my MPC 1000, uh, one turntable, and vinyl. For me, I was raised up on manually listening to the rhythm, listening to the acapella where the acapella should go. Most artists record a track, send it to me, and say, oh, the acapella was out of place because they didn't like it, but as the producer, we think for the artist and the person listening, we know where the vocals should start, where they should drop, where the beat should come out and come back in. We're not just thinking like on an artist level, like, yo, I like this sound, I like this sound. As a producer, you have to make the artist sound good, you sound good, and the people feel good all at the same time. That is your duty and job to do every single track you do, so. Then we got other issues, you know, bringing it back, like the album intro, it opens up with an old school beat, old school beat. It was actually inspired by Sam Seva, old school producer. What up, Sam? How you doing? No problem. We we sampled it up, looped it up real quick, and and, and got this beat together. Uh, but it's, it's the original way we used to perform hip hop. And that's what we're true to. That's what we try to stay true to. We try to stay true to the tradition of hip hop. We got enough people that are doing new stuff. We got enough people in, you know, innovating and, and decorating and, and celebrating. But, but who's really originating? Uh, and that's what we really want to get with. Uh, big up to the Beat Miners. Um, beat Miners came up with um, beat, a song that I call Biters. We know, yeah, it's all in the next show. Yeah, it's all in the next show. Take the bite, 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 bite. We know, yeah, it's all in the next show. Yeah, it's all in the next show. Take the bite, 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 bite. We know, yeah, it's all in the next show. Yeah, it's all in the next show. Take the bite, 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 bite. We know, it's all in the next show. And you know what biters are, you know, they're people who just bite other people's styles, they copy other people's styles, we call them biters, but that's from way back in the days. We're talking about the drug issue as well in, in the United States. Rum, pum, 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 pum. We are not the dumb ones. We see how the drugs run. We see where they come from. So this album is about the the salient issues that are going on in the hood everywhere around the world. It's not just in America's hoods, the hood is global now. And so, you know, we speak into that global hood. And with Samuel, it's interesting because I was just walking down the street one day and I went into a supermarket to buy some fruit. And while I was there in the supermarket, I was running around because I was like, you know, I know somebody's going to recognize me in here. Right there, picking up the mangoes, oranges, plums, 
and in walked Samuel right there. And he just ran up on me and was like, yo, you KRS-One. I was like, yup, this is it. So we got to talking, his vibe was cool. He let me know that he was a photographer. So we went, we did a quick photo shoot and I was impressed because he was actually working with film. And very few, you know, photographers today are really working with film. Everybody does the digital thing. But he was actually working with film. So I was really impressed with that. Uh, Mr. Oz came through. That's who really uh, is laying us down right now. As a matter of fact, recording this right now. And so this is what it is. It all came together. But it was Pierre that introduced me to the studio Everest. And so you can see how one thing links up with another. It's like the ancestors want this, this album done. So it's like I'm in the supermarket looking for fruit and in walks Samuel. He says, yo, I'm a photographer. I'm like, yo, I'm looking for a studio. He's like, yo, go right over here to Everest. I walk into Everest, run into Vincent, run into Pierre. Everything sort of came together right here, and that's what we working with. It's a spiritual project. This project has got mad soul on it. And the soul is not just in the music, it's how everything came together. Yeah.